Hi guys, good afternoon. Pastor G here with this week's edition of Coffee with Pastor G. And the coffee acronym, once again, stands for Christ Offers Forgiveness for Everyone, Everywhere. And when it comes to coffee, uh, I had an uh, interesting meeting the other day with a fellow pastor of mine uh, down in Bakersfield, who um, they're beginning to branch out into, um, they have a little cafe at their church, and so God has opened doors for them to be able to start roasting their very own coffee, uh, purchasing beans from all over the world, and then roasting it and bagging it themselves, and uh, so we may have an opportunity here at Calvary Chapel to Hatchby to be involved with that, and um, to produce our very own blend uh, of coffee here. And uh, so, interesting, uh, if anyone knows me, you know I love a good cup of coffee. And so, uh, really looking forward to that, maybe having our own coffee here at the church. And then uh, as much coffee as I drink, I may put a couple of the coffee shops here in town out of business if we start making our own coffee. But anyways, just wanted to remind everyone that tomorrow, Thursday night, we are going to be having our time of prayer and worship with uh, Lana and Barry Massey. And um, we just want to really come together as our church and pray for our country. As we know, this election season is upon us. Uh, we're going to the polls. Some of us who haven't voted by mail are going on November 3rd, this coming Tuesday. And so as a church, we need to pray for uh, the outcome is in God's hands, um, but we need to do our part as um, citizens and as Christians to uh, be a part of this opportunity that is given to us. Um, but ultimately, we want to pray for the aftermath and pray for uh, the country and the world going forward and for healing uh, to come upon this land. And so tonight we're going to do that. And then don't forget, Saturday is our Harvest Festival uh, here at the church at 5 o'clock. We have tacos and games and bounce houses and sack races and candy and nacho bars and uh, all kinds of things. So we invite you. That's this Saturday, Halloween night um, at the church at 5 o'clock. Uh, you can bring your costume. I already heard several adults are planning on wearing costumes um, so we'll see. We'll see. My kids were asking me if I was going to wear a costume, and uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll be a, a Calvary Chapel hippie uh, or something like that. But then this Sunday, also, we have Elena Hernandez, who's going to be visiting with us, sharing about the work we're doing in Mexico. And then after church, remember the citywide prayer rally that's going to be held there at Central Park. Uh, we figure both political parties have had their uh, rallies on the corner of Tucker and, and Valley. And so now the church wants to assemble and have our uh, own prayer rally there at Central Park. So that's going to be happening this Sunday at uh, 2 p.m. You probably want to get there by 1.30. Um, and so all the pastors from Tehachapi will be there, myself included. And we are just going to pray for the aftermath of the election and just for God to... Uh, heal this land. And of course, it starts with us, uh, the church of humbling ourselves, right, and, and repenting of our sins and, and turning to God again uh, and leading by example. So hopefully we'll see you after church, 1.30. Uh, the rally starts at 2 at Central Park. And so with that, I wanted to share uh, this week's proverb, a very interesting one here in Proverbs chapter 28, I'm going to read it here, picking up at verse 19. It says, He who tills his land will have plenty of food, but he who follows empty pursuits will have poverty in plenty. Verse 20 says, A faithful man will abound with blessings, but he who makes haste to be rich will not go unpunished. Verse 21 says, To show partiality is not good. Because for a piece of bread, a man will transgress. A man with an evil eye hastens after wealth and does not know that want will come upon him. And so really, these verses in Proverbs is speaking to the idea of, of wealth and, and men and women pursuing wealth, that that is their pursuit in life. 
when yet Solomon just says here that a man who tills his own land will have plenty. Uh, but the one who's always out there pursuing emptiness, pursuing uh, vanity, pursuing wealth, he says that plenty of poverty will come upon them. Or, on the contrast, those who pursue such things may oftentimes find them. But when they find them, they will continue to want yet more and more again. It will not satisfy. And so I want to focus in on verse 21 here that speaks about the character and the nature of God. God says to show partiality is not good because for a piece of bread a man will transgress. You see, when we are pursuing something that is vain, wealth is what this portion of Scripture is talking about, that we will often sell ourselves and our morals and our beliefs, we will often set those things aside and able to pursue or to reach this pursuit. That's what verse 21 says, is that a man will be willing to, um, verse 21, to show partiality is not good because for a piece of bread a man will transgress. Oh, we see that uh, in extremes today that men and women will be willing, willing to do just about anything to try to get ahead or to achieve success. Uh, they will even settle for a piece of bread. Uh, this will cause them to transgress. But remember, guys, the idea here is that God is not partial. That when we sin in one area of the law, we break the whole law. And so this idea of us being partial and, and compromising, and we know what the Bible says, but we want to we wanna pursue. We don't want to work and, and be satisfied with our work, yet we want to pursue these uh, empty pursuits. And we will be willing to do anything to achieve them, even compromise the Word of God. Here's what God says about Him not being partial, and so thus we shouldn't be partial. In the book of James chapter 2, at verse 1, the Bible says, My brethren, do not hold your faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ with an attitude of personal favoritism. For if a man comes into your assembly with a gold ring and dressed in fine clothes, and there also comes in a poor man in dirty clothes, and you pay special attention to the one who is wearing the fine clothes, and you say to him, You sit here in a good place, and you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or you sit down by my footstool. Verse 4 says, Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil motives? Listen, my beloved brethren, did not God choose the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? He says, But you have dishonored the poor man. It is not the rich who... Is it not the rich who opposes you and oppresses you and personally drags you into court? Do they not blaspheme the fair name by which you have been called? He goes on to say, If, however, you are fulfilling the royal law according to the Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing well. Verse 9 says, But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as a transgressor. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles in one point, he has become guilty of all. And so as Christians, how easily we can become partial towards things. Maybe in the area of finances and wealth, we will set aside what God's word says in order to pursue uh, wealth and to pursue these sorts of things. Well, God says, I am not partial and when you show partiality or favoritism, you are in fact sinning. And so we can see us compromising, showing partiality in the area of finances. Uh, I think of very many stories that I've heard through the years of people who aren't willing to work and be satisfied with their own hands. And so what they do, and they cannot uh, find this uh, pursuit, they cannot find the success that they're looking for, and oftentimes they are still wanting and wanting. And so they would even be willing to go as far as um, gaining this um, success, gaining these um, riches by falsehood, by lying, maybe by cheating or stealing, or maybe even by 
um, having an accident in a business and then turning around and suing the business to be financially secure. And so we see this idea of partiality and favoritism and, and taking care of the wealthy. Why? Because you'll be willing to do anything for that piece of bread. So we show favoritism, hoping that the wealthy will then bless us somehow. And so we see this idea in finances, but also in our spirituality, guys, because we can't disconnect the spirituality uh, with the physical, right? As many do, we will abandon uh, the word of God in pursuit of the physical things that we can see. But yet God rebukes his people here, Israel, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 13, which is a very powerful portion of scripture, guys, as the nation Israel, God's judgment had come upon them. You see, because they were going through the motions spiritually, God says, you, 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 you speak words to me, but your, your heart is far from me. You bless me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. So spiritually, they were going through the motions. But physically, uh, they were very successful and wealthy, and they, they cared more about these things. So they were being partial here. And really, God isn't partial, so God then brought judgment upon his people. They had turned their backs on God. They had put God behind them, and they were pursuing these other pursuits. And yet, during this time of God's judgment, at this period of time when Ezekiel is prophesying here in verse 13, some of Israel had already been taken captive into Babylon, which was God's judgment uh, that was coming upon them. And yet these prophets, some of these prophets, instead of crying out for the nation to repent and turn from these wicked ways, yet there were these prophets who were rising up, who were speaking peace and, and nothing is going to befall them and, and these things are just happening and we just need to keep pushing through. At this period of time, Ezekiel rises up, a true prophet of God. But listen to what chapter 13 verse 1 says says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy and say to those who prophesy from their own inspiration. You see, prophets were rising up who were partial, who wanted and, and were speaking on behalf of God, but it was their own inspiration. Uh, they didn't want to go back to the things of God's word. They wanted to keep pursuing this thing that they had created. And so they were prophesying in accordance with their own inspiration. They didn't want this thing to die. They wanted it to keep going. They didn't want to humble themselves and repent and turn back to God. And so the Bible says, say to these prophets who are prophesying by their own inspiration for their own good. It's like the church who sees in James that sees the wealthy man that comes in and you say, oh, sit right here, you know, take a front row seat. Why? Because maybe that wealthy man will share some of his wealth with you. You see, it's these evil inspirations, it's selfish inspirations. Uh, these things are things that God despises. And so even the spiritual leaders were falling guilty of this. And so God's ultimate rebuke to this, these, these prophets and these people in verse 8 of chapter 13, he says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have spoken falsehood and seen a lie, there be, therefore, behold, I am against you, declares the Lord of God. Because God is impartial. You have set yourself against God because you're going after these evil motives and evil inspirations. You're falling short in one area of the, the law. You have broken the whole law. You need to repent of all of your evil and turn back to God. Not just part of it. Uh, give yourself wholly to the Lord. Verse 9 says, So my hand will be against the prophet who sees false visions and utters lying divinations. They will have no place in the council of my people, nor will they be written down in the register of the house of Israel, nor will they enter the land of Israel that you may know that I am the Lord your God. God says, I'm not partial to this. You're not going to run around going through the motions and, and bringing my name into this for your selfish selfish inspirations, evil divinations. No, I, I am going to tear this down, God says, uh, so that you will know that I am the Lord your God and I am not partial. Verse 10, a key verse says, it is definitely because they have misled my people by saying peace when there is no peace. 
And when anyone builds a wall, behold, they plaster it over with whitewash. See, they loved the, the appearance of being good and godly and God's people, but their hearts were far from God. They were like Jesus would say, whitewashed tombs. Uh, inside of these tombs are dead man's bones. There's nothing alive through these routines and this appearance of righteousness. God says, I'm not partial and I will judge uh, because God wants our hearts. He wants us to repent. And so God says that, that there were many who were just prophesying, prophets, ministers of God who were saying, hey, everything's going to be okay. You know, we're just a nation full of idolatry and wickedness and sin and adultery and all of these things. Uh, but everything's going to be okay. This, this evil that's coming upon us, it's not from God. It's going to pass. And as uh, group after group was being taken into captivity and ultimately uh, all of Israel would be taken into captivity in Judah as well. Why? Because God is not partial. God hates sin. God wants us to repent of our sin and turn back to Him. And so I pray uh, that we as Christians would live our lives that way, that we would turn from sin, uh, any form of sin, financial sin, spiritual sin, because it's all sin against God. Yet in our minds, we like to compartmentalize. We like to put it in different compartments uh, that I'm this way one, way one day and I'm this way another. God says, no, I am not partial. Therefore, you shall not be partial. So I pray that we give ourselves wholly to the Lord and that we seek him with all of our heart, mind, soul and strength and that we would rest in his grace and his mercy when we are right with him, when we are open before him, when we are walk walking humbly before him when we aren't chasing these uh, inspirations that come from our own heart the own wickedness of our heart and yet we try to attach God to these inspirations and they're not from God God says you shall not cry out for peace when you're searching after your own evil ambitions no you need to despise those things you need to turn from those things and you need to turn back to me so I pray that you will be blessed the rest of this week and seek the Lord uh, and come out tonight and join us for a time of prayer and uh, seeking the Lord, praying for our country, our country, by the way, that needs to repent and turn from its evil ways or else God, uh, you know, and here's the thing, God will judge. God will judge. There is a day where man's actions and motivations will be Judged, But what I love is that God says mercy triumphs judgment. God showed his mercy. He says, I'm not overlooking judgment. Judgment is going to come. But in my mercy, I gave you a way out. I gave you a way to receive forgiveness from your sins. And so if you receive Jesus and cry out to him and confess your sins and with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Lord and that he paid the penalty for your sins, then you can be saved from this judgment. And so this is why we continue to proclaim day after day the mercy that triumphs judgment because judgment is coming. One day God will judge because God is just. But God says mercy triumphs over judgment. So receive Jesus' mercy today and walk in his ways and continue to walk humbly before him, resisting the desires and the inspirations to uh, lead us back into evil, those vain things, idol worship, a life apart from God. And let's turn back to God and love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. So bless you. May God bless you and keep you. We love you and look forward to seeing you. God bless. Bye.